Welcome back to Twist of Fate, a small business podcast where you can find your inspiration to make your entrepreneurial dreams come true. Today, we're here in sunny Sacramento, where we're here to talk about, maybe for some of you, a lost art form, painting. It can be therapeutic to the soul, keep you in the moment, and make your day feel more special. Monet Dyson of Dipped in Color, welcome to Twist of Fates. Thank you. Now, Monet, you know, Dipped in Color is a brand you created with the goal of getting children, adults, and others involved in painting. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind me asking, like, where does your interest in painting even start? Where did that come from? Yeah, so um, that started back when I was really young. Um, actually, you know, uh, my family, and you know, no family's perfect, but, um, you know, there was some issues going on. I was in school and- um, Here in Sacramento. Yes, here in Sacramento, I was born and raised. And um, my at my school, my teacher noticed, you know, some of my, I wasn't acting as usual, you know, something must be going on at home, and they would pull me out of school, I mean, my class, and then I would literally, like, paint with her, and she would just talk with me, and just try to just figure out what's going on, but that's originally where I really started, like, painting. It was kind of like a outlet, like, with everything else that's going on, and I, it continued from there, and I still have some of those paintings I, I kept, so, um, but yeah, that's where it originally got started, and I kind of forgot about it for a long period of time, and then now that I'm really digging deeper and, like, building this brand, I'm realizing it started from me as a child. And that parent-child connection is really huge that I realized that I want to really pour into my brand. Now, as an artist, if you don't mind me asking, is there a preferred painting technique that you like? Is your you contemporary? Do you prefer, like, expressive? Uh, do you throw the paint in uh, uh, like it's something, you know, like the yeah, stereotype? Yeah, right. Paint. Yeah, you so um, I, my, me personally, I do multiple type. Like I do texture art, the splat. But for my brand, I'm starting to transition on into doing like splat paint and um, also um, self-guided painting. So I don't usually like to teach, you know, sit there and like, oh, you have to do it this way. Or I want someone to be inspired by my picture and then paint their own. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, you, your paintings you've had in galleries, you've competed. What have you done with your art? How do you express or yeah. use your painting as a platform? Well, usually, like, for personally, I just keep it in my home. I don't put it oh, out really? too much. I post it, but for my brand, I, um, you know, I put it on my you know, website, so if someone wants to purchase a paint kit um, and they can create their own version of it, um, and then it goes further from there that they are in the moment with their family and they're painting with one another from a design I created, but they're making their own creation from that design. Painting and art definitely is a passion. Yes. But at some point, you decided to make it a business. Right. <laughs> so what inspired you to make that transition? Yeah, so, um, well it started originally like after a car accident, uh, me and my son and my niece were in, and I just really needed to take time to like, you know, get better, I had a lot of anxiety after the car accident. Mm -hmm. So I just became a stay at home mom and I started painting and doing tie dye um, and different type of art forms. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I was at home and I'm like, I needed some money and I, people in the neighborhood, you know, asked me to make, you know, like tie dye t-shirts and things. And that's where initially the name Dipped in Color came from because the tie dye, you dip it in color. So, um, Interesting. I, yeah, so it came originally from that, that I was like, okay, the need, you know, I need some money, make some money, and then I can see this becoming something bigger, so. Now, did you pass you this painting technique to your children already, or are they not into it? Are my, they just I, into I, iPad? Like, <laughs> no, you know? my son, he paints, he paints a lot with me, so um, that's where originally, um, when I went back to work full time, I felt like I was missing moments with him, and I was like, okay, well, how can I still connect with him that's not too overwhelming for me to plan or do, and I was like, oh, paint and some canvases, and I would just sit there and paint with him, and um, I was like, I probably am not the only mom that feels this way. So I was like, 
why not I host a paint event? And from there, I just knew I'm like, this is where it needs to be. Like, I need to do paint events, help people in the community to come together and be in that moment and create. And it really helped me and my son because I was like overwhelmed. I'm like, I'm a new mom. I have one child. His name is Ezekiel. And um, I was like, what can I do that's easy for him? And he, you know, he enjoys painting. He paints his cars. He paints uh -huh. canvases. He paints a lot. So he still is very interested in me. So I'm going to break the fourth wall and talk to my listeners on this one. So Monique is sharing a very special point for many of you. When you experience loss, pain, struggle, in her case it was an accident, she channeled a lot of that negative energy into a positive thing that was her passion and even learned to translate that into business. Because why wouldn't you want to do for work what you do in love in life, right? Yeah. Now, I have to ask this question because this is a concern. Yeah. So, you know, to be transparent. Like, right, of course. I, you may not know this yet. I'm a huge video game player. Yeah. <laughs> and when I mean, like, I probably was the hardest core video game player in corporate America. Like, I would lose sleep yeah. to play different oh, games. No. I never wanted to take that passion mm -hmm. and turn it into a business because yeah. I'd be afraid that it would feel like work. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, for you personally, yeah. is painting work? Does it feel like work or it doesn't? Yeah, no, it doesn't um, feel like work because I, I still dibble and dabble in different type of art or like painting. So I feel like I haven't got to the point where I feel like it feels too much like work now. Other things that are not my strengths are feel like work because those aren't my strong suits. But um, like when it comes to me doing these events and being there in the moment with everyone and painting, like it doesn't feel like work. It's fun, you know, it's sure. light. It's not like, I could see if I had to instruct because I did try the instructing way and I was like, this is not me. This is not mm -hmm. the way I want to do it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let's move to the business. So yeah. you have, there's a lot to unpack. There's yes. dipped in color, mm -hmm. early version mm -hmm. was focused on apparel or yeah. merchandise. Right. But then now you shifted it to these events. Let's yes. take the first part. Yes. So, you know, you've demonstrated the community you have this ability. Mm -hmm. It was that people started coming to you like, could you make t-shirts or you mentioned hoodies earlier. Yeah. How did that work? What happened? Yeah, so initially when I was a stay-at-home mom and I was making these tie-dye t-shirts and was like, okay, this can be a brand because people in the neighborhood, I was posting it, you know, the tie-dye, and I was like, oh, you know, dipped in color, you know, you know, your kids can wear it. You know, a lot of parents would ask me, oh, where did you get that? I'm like, I made it, and that's where it just started to roll into, like, this is a brand. Um, and then the hoodies, you know, it got cold, so I was like, oh, let me come out with some hoodies and people were really interested. Um, but yeah, I, I felt like when I started doing the painting, I felt more passionate doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I decided to transition and go that route. So you try to pivot. Uh, mm -hmm. You're in a pivot now, right? right? Yes, so, currently. Well, but, but before we move to that, I want to ask you, so mm -hmm. like, uh, how did you handle the business aspects of delivering shirts for people? Because a lot of my listeners may be interested in Shopify, yeah. Etsy, yeah. Amazon Marketplace. So how did you handle like, okay, now you knew you could get orders, you you, you had to fulfill them? Well, yeah. For an artist, that's like business stuff. Right, right? Like exactly. They, that's like, okay, well now, you know, people is, you know, our local can just come and pick up. I'm like, how can I make this official? So I got a Shopify website and uh, most of the time it was orders shipping out. I had to figure out, okay, how do I weigh it? The package shipping out. So it was really technical because it wasn't my realm because I was like, oh, okay, you have to get a little exact if I want to, you know, make sure that, you know, I'm getting the good prices on. Where did you put the stuff? It was in my room. <laughs> it was in my room. I, I lived at my parents' house at that point, um, and I had a portion in my room with all um, the tubs of clothing, and they were, you know, sorted out by size, and I would just, every time I would get an order from Shopify, it would show me. And Shopify is really seamless, you know, with when you get an order, and then, you know, the label is pretty much made. What made you choose Shopify? I mean, there's a lot of different yeah. ways you could distribute. What, why, why Shopify? 
Well, I'm I'm not with them no longer. <laughs> I, mean, I transitioned, I but yeah, uh, I chose Shopify because it was really simple. It was really easy to set up. It was pretty much, you know, it wasn't like you know bones and bare. It was literally pretty much, you know, you just plug in your pictures and you add it there, and you're pretty much up and running as a business on and the then website. There's a range of merchandise can go all kind of different ways. Like right. Gloves masks right because right? this was during yeah. covid yep so, i had those too. <laughs> oh, you did so yeah. what, what what type what was the range of stuff that you um, created? yeah so i had the hoodies i had t-shirts and i had um the mask i had croc charms so i started you know really you know as an artist it's kind of like ooh, idea idea make this make that create all these things um but then i was like okay i gotta you know kind of bring it in and focus somewhere. Cause you know, a lot of people were interested. It was really good. It was exciting. Um, so yeah, it was. And then how did you get the word out yeah. on, like there's the, on, so there's e-commerce online. Mm -hmm. You could take orders in Shopify, yep. but I think you actually went out and beat the street and like. Yeah, like I did pop up um, events. I did a lot of pop up events with uh, many different uh, companies, um, businesses and I also um, was on Instagram posting, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, trying to connect with people, just posting and kind of just hitting the pavement of getting my name out there like, hey, I got these t-shirts. Was that hard? You know, was about, oh, yeah. This is like sales, right? Yes. That's not art, right? <laughs> That's like not <laughs> And but I think the thing that really helped me was I'm a people person. Like I love to be out there communicating, talking with people, getting to know other people from different walks of life. So mm -hmm. I think that made it easier. But the whole like packing everything, unpacking and, you know, it, it was a lot. But it's still I, I look back and I really I enjoyed it overall. So awesome. So just to keep my listeners up to date. So Monet and I actually met at, it was called uh, Small Business Saturday yep. um, at the Doco Arena. Yeah. And I actually brought my family yes. and I saw your brand. And I'll tell you what I thought was unique. Even at that time, I knew that this was more than a t-shirt. Yeah. Just the fact that you chose, it's like it was dipped in color and it had like an elephant mm -hmm. painting. So I knew that there was more going on. So I'm not surprised that you pivoted. Yeah. Now we're talking three years later, right? Yeah. So now let's fast forward to where you are today. So you had some success with events where you wanted to get children mm -hmm. and parents involved in the craft of painting. Yes. How does that work? How did that factor into your business? Like were yeah. these events that people go online and request? Is this things yeah. that you host? Was it sponsored? How did that work? So I hosted these events. I usually either, you know, posted on Eventbrite and then got the word out. Um, I even emailed Good Day Sacramento like, hey, I, can you post my flyer? And they were like, oh, well, actually, you can actually come on and talk about your event. And I was like, oh, OK. What made you do that? So, what made you think that you could get on Good Day Sacramento? I, I, I emailed a lot of people. I just was like, you know, I mean, it's better than, you know, keeping my mouth closed if I want this to get out there and in front of people. I got to go straight to the people that can do that for me. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to just do it and email the people and contact whoever. Like I CC'd so many I found, went on their website and found all the emails and just CC. I'm like, somebody's going to see this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Breaking the fourth wall, uh, you can see the tenacity and the drive for success to do something new. At that point, it's not desperation. It's just literally exploration. So yeah. kudos to you on that. Thank you. So another question I have is, so what inspired you to make that pivot to say, I'm going to host an event? Because it's yeah. very different than e-commerce, right. merchandise. Like that's a, that's a, either it's an expansion or Jason mm -hmm. play or a true pivot. What yeah. made you? What was the inspiration for you to do that? Yeah, so that was at the point where I went back to work full time, as I mentioned, and I was just like kind of in a moment of like, you know, I have so many things going on. And I kind of mm -hmm. felt like I didn't know what to do with Dipton Color at the point because I was like, I'm not feeling inspired to make these t-shirts anymore, to do the clothing, mm -hmm. and I kind of felt stuck. So I was like, okay, well, what can I do? I want to make this a viable business. I want to keep it going, but where can I pivot? And I just was one day went home and I was like, okay, what can I do with my son? We were painting. I just 
and my brain was like, ooh, I can, you know, do this with other people and try to host the event. So it was just more of a, you know, on a whim. And then I knew Mother's Day was coming up. So I decided to host a Mommy and Me paint and sip and that oh, wow. sold out. Like a lot of people were upset they couldn't make it. I'm like, I'm one person. I'm like, I wish I could, you know, have as many, you know, there. And then they had a capacity too. Did that so. surprise you? Oh, yes, that it did. So yeah. yeah, I was beyond surprised because one, it was my first event, you know, first time hosting an event of that, you know, sort of a paint event. How did so, you choose to promote it? Um, I posted a lot on social media and I reached out to where I was hosting at, which was Oak Park Brewery. And um, I had flyers, of, you know, printed out and I went walking to close businesses in the area asking if I can place my flyers there. And if, you know, you can tell your customers about this upcoming event that's in your area that we can bounce off of each other. So um, that's how I pretty much- Nay, let me tell you something. <laughs> Mothers, painting, and beer. That's a winning formula, yeah. right? That's a winning yeah. formula. I, I'd say it's not an association people would right. like. But I think, yes, a mother needs a beer every right. now and then to kind of relax. To relax, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's a really good, good on you. Trying to do everything yourself? How's that going for you? Three Steps Forward is a full-service marketing agency that takes a weight off entrepreneurs and helps them follow through on their ideas. Step up your personal brand, boost your web presence, and elevate your business with our team of marketing experts. Are you ready to reinvent your business? Schedule a consultation today. Visit our website at threestepsforward.com. I have three sons, yeah. and my oldest son, Dylan, was at... Goddard, mm -hmm. which is a daycare center, yeah. and he was at the San Ramon branch. Yeah. Great, great school. And, you know, Dylan chooses not to lean forward and put his elbows on the table when he eats, yeah. so he spills everything on his shirt. Oh, yeah. Even now, he's six, I'm still having a hard time breaking that habit. Yeah. So he has all this stuff on his shirt at school. So yeah. He takes off his shirt, and they give him another shirt. So he comes home, and that shirt had an elephant oh. with paintbrushes on it, yeah. and it said "dipped in color." Oh. And I told my, I told Dylan, I said, "Where'd you get that shirt from?" Yeah. He said, and I said, "Did you get it at school?" He says, like he remembers. Oh yeah, I messed up my shirt. They gave me a new one, mm -hmm. and I told my wife. I know exactly who made this shirt. Yeah. It was you. Yeah. So that was two years later. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, uh, you know, my comment to my listeners, even if it's something you're not passionate about, yeah. when you go out and create value, yeah. you never can tell who exactly will get it, right? how, and where, and then it can spark mm -hmm. an idea. So... I mean, I hope that makes you feel better about no, like it, it, uh, <laughs> that phase of your business yeah. dipped in color. It's not all wasted, right? right? Like uh, you've impacted a lot of people. Yeah. Now, I do think uh, what I'd like to talk about in this event model. So the idea at that time was people would pay for a spot or, mm -hmm. or make a reservation to be right. a part of the event. Yeah. And then you essentially you have to obviously p cover your fees for materials right like mm -hmm. the, you provide all that yep. and then you have to find a venue yeah probably pay them a little something right and then you take the profits and then now you can plan the next event correct and then you start scaling this yes. is my assumption is yes. that correct yes okay so now how many events have you done after that um I I want to say like 10. That's a lot of events. That Double is. digits. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of events. Yeah, I did about Because this is probably in yeah. like a year span, right? Yeah. Like you haven't been doing that forever. Yeah. And I, you know, took a step back from those as well of just trying to figure out how I can build on the online space and um, mm -hmm. venture <laughs> even further did, in the brand. Did the event model meet your expectation? It did. It just, I know for me, I'm like, I, I still definitely am going to do events, uh, most definitely, but I feel like 
I would I want to have one space for everyone to come to. So that's what I'm working on. So that's where I'm like, okay, let me. Like you don't want to find all yeah, these I'm venues. Yeah, bouncing everywhere, then bringing everything, hauling. It's it's a lot of work that goes into the back. I mean, the day of the event is amazing. It's so fun. I finally get to you know relax a bit, even though I'm still helping everyone out every now and again. But the whole planning and bringing everything. If I had one space, that would definitely. I feel put me in a better space of not so much overwhelm in the background of trying to get it all there and put together. <laughs> Did you notice that people that attend one event, mm -hmm. they come back to the next one? Yes. So there's not a big drop off, right? Like yeah. they, they continue, right? Yes. And they would ask me, like, when's the next one or when we're going to do it? And I'm like, okay, stay up to date. I'm going to post on there, um, especially when I started slowing down. I'm like, you know, I'll, you know, post when I have the next one. But, yeah, I had a lot of people like, hey, what's going on? Where are they at? <laughs> They're so, loyal now. Yeah. So do you feel that uh, you would move into, like, a membership or subscription model in the future? Or you want to keep it, like, yeah. voluntary? It's a little loose. I'm not sure. I haven't thought of that with the actual event. So that's a really good point. I did not think of that. <laughs> uh, it's uh, There's the whole loyalty programs you can see popularized by the bigger businesses. Oh, it's yeah. like people yeah. can I look, I think I know my wife saw some of your events yeah. and thought of our kids. Yeah. It's like, oh, we should do this. Yeah. So if you can continue the experience beyond the event mm -hmm. where like now I'm a member and I can, yeah. they'll come to work for you or they'll right. say, I'm going to go tell my friend to become a member and then we'll go to the events yeah. together. Just a thought. Yeah, so no. you're now moving in some new directions and you're competing in competitions. Let's talk about that. So the, is the brand name still dipped in color or are you moving? Oh no, it's all the same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> so, dipped in color. so dipped in color now is this, you're working on a venue or location mm -hmm. that will host events mm -hmm. for children's parents, mothers, fathers yeah. to paint. Yep. Could you tell me more about your working? You, you're already doing like a business model and pitching this. So yes. how's that going? What's what's your experience? With that? Yes, it's been great. It's a, a huge learning experience going through it. Um, it's calling our dreamers. Um, incubator program so it's a whole program that we're going through and still in the midst of doing so it's a whole bunch of classes that we're attending finances uh, and so much more of just learning about the business and how we can make this come to life um, but uh, as far as the what I want to bring to life, which is a dipped in color splat studio. So it's not exactly. What is a splat studio? So the splat studio is where like families and kids come and they literally have a canvas and will provide you with coveralls, goggles, where you can come and literally splat paint on the canvas and get messy. But we have everything that, you know, keeps your clothes protected and all, but just knowing that you can create freely and not worry about, oh my gosh, it's gonna get everywhere because that's what we want you to do <laughs> there's a nintendo video game that it's like yeah that they splat paint everything. oh okay see that i didn't even know about that either <laughs> look you know about the games <laughs> i told you i'm a gamer so then this splat studio model mm -hmm. i saw you pitch at sacramento state the yeah. carlson center of entrepreneurship yeah it was called startup pitch challenge mm -hmm. what was that experience like for you that, because I can tell yeah. you, there's not a lot of artists there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, this is, you know, the evil business guy or the <laughs> marketer that's going to take over the world. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm just saying, that's a different environment, right? Yeah. No, it, it really was. Um, but it definitely um, was really good because I got a lot of information because, I mean, I've had done so many things and I really wanted to hone in like my focus on these paint kits and just focusing on this splat studio and how I can really just build from there because I'm like okay I did the clothing I did that but like how can we bring this to a focus where people really understand like okay dibs and color is known for this and mm -hmm. that's what that competition really helped me identify and get clear on would so. you do it again like was it was oh yeah I definitely I mean that you was weren't intimidated or I was I definitely was that was my first time ever um pitching in front of a crowd of people like 
eyes. So I, you know, we were in the age of like COVID and doing things on video. So like I never <laughs> had to go in person. So I was like, okay, now I have all these eyes staring at me. And I'm, but you know, it's kind of like once you're in it, it's like, you know, all that fear shuts off and you know, you go into like work mode or me, I, that's how I, I you know, you work. Well. Yeah. Thank you. So I was a judge, just to the, you know, keep the listeners here. Okay, so now you're in a pitch competition right now. Yes. So wh which one is that? That's Calling All Dreamers uh, Incubator Program. Yeah, so that's... What made you want to apply for that? Did you just find it? Um, where was I? I think I was like either in Old Sac or somewhere, and I had seen a flyer, and then I seen it again, you know, on my way home on the big uh, screen that's by the freeway, and I'm like, I need to, I because the first time I seen it, I was with my son, and we were just, out, you know, relaxing. I just seen it. I was like, oh, okay, that's something I should look into. But then I seen it again on the big screen. I was like, I need to go check out what that is, and that's when I I had seen what it was, and I see that, you know. It's an idea, like it can be an idea and you bring it to life, or it can be an existing business. In even though I am an existing business, you are. I was gonna say, yeah, wait a minute. I mean, you I'm are. existing, but I, I mean, I never opened a splat studio, so it's not like mm -hmm. I have one before. So it's still a new idea that I'm bringing to Sacramento. I love to see it because, uh, something I talk about going beyond even multi generational wealth, like mm -hmm. you know, as a member of the black community. You are a member of the black community. I applaud the fact, as a female black business owner, that's good. <laughs> you are progressively moving into real estate, mm -hmm. owning property, mm -hmm. and using said property to create community programs yeah. to teach skills yeah. like art to greater Sacramento. I mean, I don't know if you think of it like that. Yeah. But that's inspirational stuff. No, that's a good think? perspective. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so you, through this competition, you're a finalist or you're still in the competition or where, yeah. what phase are you in? Now? I'm a finalist, but um, they... Congrats. Thank you. Um, so they actually have a voting period from December 1st to 14th um, that will determine if I move on to... Um, as a, a finalist of five. So right now we're uh, a group of nine. So then four will fall off and then it'll be five left um, that will continue through the program, so. And throughout this process, you've also, like you said, you've been on Good Day Sacramento several times. Yes. That's, I mean, did your son watch the recording? Like you should oh, you yeah. need to say, look, yeah. mommy's on yeah. TV, right? <laughs> he did, yeah. And he was at school and he told, you know, his teacher and I let them know as well. And they turned it on actually. Um, there at the school. So, um, yeah, it's been exciting and an amazing journey just being experiencing that. Personal question. Yes. Are you an artist or an entrepreneur? Both. <laughs> can I be both? Is, you can. Is that, is that a transition? Have you ever thought of it that way? I mean... No, I feel like... I, I mean, odd enough I truly feel like I've been like I mean if you ask my parents I mean I've always been like this entrepreneur at heart of wanting to start this start that ideas um, and then art has always been a place like had a place in me I mean so I think naturally it never was like a transition it's just more of learning and how to really um, go through this journey of entrepreneurship because I knew at heart that I would be doing something and I my parents told me they felt the same too. <laughs> In some ways I feel, first of all, you're a female business leader. That's already saying a lot. Thank you. So did you have any anxieties when you, I'm talking even at the beginning when you decided to start a business, was that, an, you know, did you have any fears or concerns of failure? Yes. <laughs> um, one, because, I mean, it's not of the norm in my family. So, uh, I mean, I had a lot of doubt of people, you know, they didn't understand what I was trying to do from then. And they say Yeah, and it's Haters? not even... <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say all, I feel like a lot of people, I mean, it can, it can be half-half haters and then also just people who don't understand. They can't grasp the concept. They don't see what you're trying to do. And um, I mean, it, I can't really 
explain like until you really see it. I tried to explain as much and they weren't grasping it until they started seeing it roll and see what I was doing and be like, oh, wow. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest, that was my parents. They were like, you're pouring all this money. You know, some few of the few were my parents, but I love them, <laughs> love my parents. <laughs> but um, uh, they were just like, you're pouring all this money, you're a mom, like, you know, you don't have money to do, you know, do this and you're, you know, living with us. And I was like, you know, I got it. Like, it's on my heart to do this and make it come to life. So I just, anyway, just threw myself in and just decided to keep going. And I mean, here today, I mean, I'm still going and pushing. And I mean, I get fears every now and again, like, oh my gosh, like, am I doing the right thing? But mm -hmm. it's that moment of just seeing like, okay, there's, I was, you know, when I first started and here I am now. So obviously I'm doing something right. And to just continue to go with my gut and just like progress in what I'm learning and just connect, like as you said, that you're really good at networking. So that's a huge thing in entrepreneurship is networking. So I don't know that I'm really good at networking. Let's I just say you are. <laughs> I think mm. The same way you have to fundraise every yeah. day of your life, mm -hmm. you have to network every day of your life right. if you're going to succeed as an entrepreneur. That's correct. Doesn't matter if you're in art, doesn't matter if you're in marketing, doesn't matter what trade you're in, you will live or die on fundraising yeah. and networking. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with this? I agree, yeah. Because, I mean, um, networking can take you much further than you thought you could go. I mean, just mm -hmm. meeting people that are in spaces that you're not or they're missing your name in other spaces that you haven't even came across or known about, but then they come to you like, hey, you know, so-and-so, you know, told me about you or I see you on this or this video, and it just opens a lot of doors with networking with people, and it's really good. Yeah. It's been clearly a journey. Yes. <laughs> from... A car accident, traumatic mm -hmm. event. Yeah. Probably that was your twist of fate. Yep. <laughs> that pushed you into merchandise, apparel, mm -hmm. to events, to owning property, mm -hmm. pitch competitions. Good day, Sacramento. Right. So is there anything along the way that maybe you regret or... Maybe if you had a do-over, you'd say, oh, I would do this differently because I think my listeners could benefit from hearing that. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we really go back, I mean, I, I, I honestly would not like change anything because I wouldn't have learned. So mm -hmm. if I go back and change, I wouldn't probably, I wouldn't be in the same spot. I mean, it, I mean, it could benefit, but I feel like a lot of my, well, the hardest thing for me was jumping in and trying to do it. I kept, like, you know, people telling me, like, don't do it, and I'm like, oh, do it, don't do it, do it, don't, should I do it, you know, and I'm just like, okay, I'm just do it, because, like, you know, in the back of my head, I sometimes feel like, okay, I don't know, you know, enough, or I shouldn't, like, how, how do I think I can do this, and um, I think just the biggest thing is not doubting myself as much as that I feel like I would have changed. It's just knowing mm -hmm. and being confident in myself. Like I'm going to figure it out at the end of the day and just put myself out there sooner. Cause I, I sat on it for a little bit and I was like hesitant to just go for it. And, um, that would be the only difference I'd make is not hesitate on myself and really, you know, put myself out there and be confident that, you know, um, can make this happen. Don't you think that's a necessary skill for painting to stay in the moment? Right? Yes. <laughs> so you Very can apply that so. to business, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, well, listen, I applaud your story, your Thank efforts. You. And, you know, I'm not involved with the process that you're going through for mm -hmm. the pitch competition. Mm -hmm. But here's my view. Whether you're selected as a finalist or not, I think you're a winner in my book. Like, Thank this has taught you skills. It's pushing you to new areas. And, you know, I really... Thank you for opening up about your story. Thank you. And I'm going to move into my final thoughts here. To my listeners, um, I hope you're inspired by Monet and the Dipped in Color brand and how it's pivoted and evolved and moved into providing a service to the community that is special in teaching a technique related to art and painting. A lesson for all of you from this is 100% that your passion 
your hobby, your trade, can definitely become an economic force for good, for your community, for you, for others. And yes, you can make a little money along the way. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, like, don't feel that that makes you less authentic or less genuine. It is a natural process. So with that, um, Monet, if you don't mind, uh, how can some of my listeners inspired uh, get in touch with you personally? Yeah. Because there could be a lot of listeners that are thinking about their own brands yeah. and their own merchandise right. and may want to learn from you. How yeah. would they get in contact with you? Yeah, so I'm really um, heavily on Instagram. Um, I, I dipped in color, so dip the letter in color. And then also on my website, I have my email and contact information um, listed there to get in touch with me. And the events that you host, like even future events, mm -hmm. it's on that same website. Oh yes, everything's posted there on my social media, my website that I post um, that information. Fantastic. If you like this content, share, like, subscribe. It helps us out a lot to get this free content out to you that are aspiring entrepreneurs because our goal is to help you build your dreams with planning, passion, and optimism. With that, I look forward to seeing you on the next Twist of Fate. Twist of Fate is hosted by Doug Younger. It's produced by John Lundvid and Matthew Brown at Ezo Creative. Moni Yu designs our graphics and Enrique Pimentel manages our digital life. Our theme music is by Jamie Bathgate. Special thanks to all of our patrons. You can support the show by visiting patreon.com slash twist of fate podcast. Thanks for listening.